All right, let's do this. <laughs> so this is going to be the deep dive video into Dominic, the new Triple S assassin that was out with the patch, the update that came out this morning, April 27th, 2023. So Dominic, another Triple S assassin. We now have three. What are my initial thoughts on Dominic? Um, I think with the addition of Dominic, the assassin class is a viable option for content. Now, I've tested out in PvP. There are there is there are there is a use case. So, is it an ideal PvP team? I don't think so. But if you're coming up in the game, and I always recommend that people work on vanguards early because the game feeds you Crete, and then it uh, you want to get Leo because Leo is good for content. And then you want to focus on summoners because there's so much content in this game that requires summoners. But then after you kind of got your vanguard and your summoners, you got uh, you got to kind of make a choice. What do you want to go for? And right now, there's a, there's a bunch of viable options. You can go hunters, which, which are an incredibly in, uh, huge investment to get up and running to be viable. There's tanks, which is a very, very good PvP team. It's also good for new PvE content. Um, but again, you're going to have to z farm Panda and Zeta, or you could go energy, but for energy, that's also a really high investment because you need four pieces. You need Nord and Pooh. Um, Ravenna, I guess is optional. You can kind of replace her, but you need Miranda. You need the, all those teams are really high investment. The summoners are high investment too. I guess the whole point of this little rant is that I think that with the addition of Dominic, they are giving us another semi- viable team for pvp and they definitely have a place in pve as we saw with the easter events we had an assassin focused uh game mode or challenge easter challenge so is he a must pull no thankfully no he is not a must pull he is not a daniel he's not a nord he's not an amp he's not a leo so you guys have the option to pull him or not depending on what team you want to focus on after you get your summoner team up and rolling. That said, you guys know how I always do these types of videos. I recorded footage of Dominic all tricked out on my main account on my phone. We're going to review that footage first. We're going to deep dive into his kit and we're going to go over his gear. Uh, there's really... This guy's got a really straightforward kit and he's fairly straightforward to gear as well. So after that pre-recorded footage or after that, that footage... Uh, we're going to go over other footage uh, showing you uh, where Dominic is going to shine in what game modes. I got a little bit of PvP to show you. I got a lot of PvE to show you. But we'll we'll talk about that when we get to it. For now, let's go into the deep dive. Let's try this again. I swear, whenever I try to record a video on my phone, everybody tries to get a hold of me. So Dominic, there's mine. Uh, Immortal Zero. All nice and sparkly gold. Let's do his kit first. But first, let's admire the hard work that the developers put into these intro slash cutscenes, which are quite fantastic. Feel bad for the guy on the bike. Cool, cool, cool looking ninja character. So let's go to his uh, kit first. His ultimate, Dominic. Throws a shuriken at the target, dealing damage equal to 800% of his attack, and applies mark. When he attacks, he's going to prioritize that marked target, and the mark lasts for 5 seconds. When the mark disappears, it goes boom, and deals damage equal to 100% of his attack, plus 17% of the crit damage received during the mark's duration so the more assassins hit him as well or the more overall crit damage that person with mark takes uh, the more he goes boom the maximum damage cannot exceed seven thousand percent of dom's attack there can only be one mark target at a time this skill has no range and it will always prioritize the hero or the enemy hero with the lowest hp now the talent modifier reads when the shuriken hits an enemy it will return which, and then this is what doesn't make sense, followed by Dominic's next three basic attacks with maximum speed. The verbiage there is kind of weird. Uh, I, I, I don't know. To me, that sounds like it's going to 
just apply more damage. It's 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 very weird. You guys tell me what that means. His first common skill, uh, Dom deals three quick attacks to nearby targets. Each attack deals damage equal to 210% of his attack. Prioritizing marked target or the marked target. If there are no marked target, then he just attacks random people. Talent modifier reads, this skill's attack depletes 100 attacks, sorry, so times three, deplete 100 energy points off of your target. If the enemy has insufficient energy for him to sap, the damage that he deals is increased by 20%. This is a really cool mechanic. Uh, I think Rez is the only other person I know that can strip energy or like your ultimate bar off of an uh, enemy. Now Dom can do that as well. Perfect kill. Second common skill, Dominic phases through an enemy, dealing damage equal to 480% of his attack. On a crit hit, <clears throat> this is gonna stun the enemy for two and a half seconds. Uh, so a stun is always very, very welcome on any character, especially an attacker. His, ooh, he does not have a passive. This is an, a third common skill. When there are other assassins or vanguard heroes and i've tested this you don't need uh, a vanguard as well you just need another assassin or another vanguard hero on your team uh, but it says the battlefield so that could possibly mean the enemy as well dominic enters a state of invisibility in this state he cannot be selected for attacks or skill as a target for an attack or skill so meaning i'm assuming that means if someone launches an aoe attack which is one of their skills, he will just miss it, I'm assuming? No, no, no. Attack means basic, skill means, uh, I'm sure you can take splash damage. All damage is reduced by 75%, which is quite a bit for an attacker, and it allows him to pass through the targets. It, he just can, uh, he doesn't have to run around, he'll just go straight through. In a state of invisibility, his crit damage is increased by 24%. I think that goes up to 30, yes it does. And the talent modifier reads, Dominic's movement speed is increased to the maximum while invisible. So you'll see this when we start a battle, he'll just beeline it straight towards the enemy because he gets uh, maximum movement speed, right? If there's another assassin on his team or, or if there's another assassin on the battlefield or vanguard, whatever. So kind of a very straightforward kit, uh, nothing too crazy. There's a little bit of that uh, needs a vanguard or assassin on the team. Obviously, you need him high crit because on crits, he'll, in he'll do specific things. Uh, build him. <clears throat> uh, just a really good burst damage dealer. He's got a, a couple ways he can just bang out a huge molly of damage. So let's go to his exclusive first. So Shroud of Twilight Enhancement. When invisible, all damage that Dominic receives will be deducted over the next 30 seconds. So, kind of like Prism Amulet. Um, while he's invisible, he can still take damage, so that kind of answers my question, but that damage is going to be spread out. He's a, he, he can't take a big burst hit of damage while he's invisible. So that's the unlock, the X10 uh, Twilight Attack Enhancement. If an attack crits, and, and that is this one, so this is the one where he attacks three times, right? And depletes their energy. If that attack crits, which he's probably going to do, the subsequent attack, like the next one, deals 20% more damage, but it says it stacks. It doesn't say how long, how, how much, but it stacks. So this guy does have a bit of a ramping damage in his kit. And the X20... Perfect kill enhancement. If the target's HP is greater than 50% when this skill is activated, the skill is reactivated on the target. Now that is this one, perfect kill. This is where he phases through an enemy and deals a big chunk, like 480%, uh, actually 680% um, is what mine is. Now that's a big chunk of damage. And then on crit, he's gonna stun. So you can kind of stun lock a character, right? If he crits, um, then he's going to do this again, and if he crits, he's going to do crit damage. So the talent modifier reads on crit damage, stun the enemy, so he can reactivate it and go again. Double stun. So that is his kit. Like I said, it is a very, in my opinion, straightforward kit. 
the his talents. He is an SSS, so you're going to want to do them all. Um, I'm doing them all. Obviously, I'm out of soul potions. I will do them all. Uh, I'm not going to really touch the X talents yet. Let's give them time to breathe. I'm not even going to have them uh, av X talents available for a while. But gear. So he is an assassin, though. So he is on the squishier side, even given all of his damage mitigation. Um, I do recommend that you want to run a Marauder set. You can run a Sudden Signet Overload set like your typical uh, crit rate, crit damage build. Uh, you do want really high crit rate on him since there's a lot of crit rate stuff built into his kit and uh, crit damage. But Marauder is going to be best because it's also going to give him that increased lifesteal for five seconds, which is really nice. He does a lot of damage. So because he de deals a lot of damage, um, his lifesteal... He's going to get, what, 20% of the damage dealt as lifesteal? I, I think that's how that works. Um, so he's going to be able to have some self-heals if you run him in Marauder. And then um, at, when he teleports with his Shuriken, he's going to ramp up or increase his uh, crit damage by 80%, right? So after each displacement, which is his teleport skill, uh, crit damage jumps up. So I've got him, um, what, crit damage? He's already sitting at about 260 Attack on another 80, so he's going to be at 340% crit damage for quite a bit of time running the Marauder set. Crit rate gloves, uh, which is what you kind of got to do to get really, really high crit rate numbers in a Marauder set. And then attack helm, attack feet, and then up top, you're going to want to look for crit rate and crit damage substats. If you can get it, throw some attack percentage substats on there as well. You see this one's crit damage one, crit rate. Uh, crit damage two, no crit rate. Uh, crit rate two, crit damage one. Uh, crit damage one on my boots. Crit damage one on my head. And crit damage two on my hands, which gives my gear set 81% uh, crit rate, and he's gonna get 9% from talents. Um, so, do, 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 keep them, do, make sure you max this one out regardless. You really, really want that crit rate because then you can look for more crit damage on your gear set. So mine's sitting at 90% crit rate. So pretty much guaranteed to always crit. Uh, and then I got 60% crit damage, which is very, very good for a Marauder set if I do say so myself. So am I missing anything? Let's go over the uh, what the game recommends. So the game is recommending that his core stats are attack and crit rate. I understand why, since a lot of his skills scale off of attack percentage. But I think this game has proven that crit damage is more important. So um, I'll leave it up to you how you want to gear him, but uh, I would recommend Marauder Set. Um, I think it'll be the most beneficial in PvP, and I think it's the most beneficial in the new Terra Dome X levels, since there's a lot of damage being dished out. Uh, Commander recommendations. He's re recommending Gautier and Gabal. I don't know why they would say Gautier. I think that uh, Hagridon and Gabal are really the only options. I think that's a miss. And then for prototypes, it's basically recommending all of the damage type prototypes. Recommended heroes to pair him with? Well, no, go figure, it's the assassins. How do you get them? Pulling tickets. Game modes where he's recommended? Whoa. Terror Dome, okay, cool. They screwed up. This is not right. It should not be Rolet of Truth. Wait a minute. No, it is Relay of Truth. It's just that's the wrong icon. <laughs> that is the uh, Mirage Space icon, not the Relay of Truth icon. Uh, whoopsie. Yeah. Whoops. They screwed that one up. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, uh, now let's go check out some gameplay uh, and where he is good in what game modes. All right. So... Whoa, 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 streamer fail, streamer fail. Okay, so there's one thing I missed uh, when we went over that deep dive was I did not go over his exclusive 20. So let me pop my head up here, or 30, sorry, exclusive 30. Didn't discuss that, it's important because uh, 
we have to determine whether or not it's good or not. So his 30 is his ultimate. When the mark expires, it explodes. Oh, let's make it bigger. There we go. When the mark disappears, <laughs> it explodes. Dealing damage to targets within a 3 meter radius for reference. Miranda's initial bubble was 3 meters. It's not huge. But since he's melee, he should be in the in the midst of things. Uh, three meter radius equal to 100% of his attack and 25% of his crit damage. Uh, oh, wait. And 25% of the crit damage received by the marked target during the marks duration. So that could be a lot. That could be a lot. A lot. So much so that the maximum damage cannot exceed 10,000 of his attack. Okay. So that's the one thing I missed. Is his X-30 worth it? Uh, generally, I would say no. No. I don't think it is worth it unless you are going to focus or go all in on the Assassin team. In that case, go for it. But I would say that Rickert's X-30 comes first, then Dom, then Bailey. Right? So, keep that in mind. Okay, so next footage. What do we want to see first? Let's go PvP. Let's go PvP. I don't have a whole lot. Um, it's it's really not a whole lot of data. But let's switch over and we'll show you this real quick. I did do a couple fights. Uh, three, actually. So I have heard from other content creators that it can beat vanguards. Uh, I haven't tested that myself. But... Um, I did three tests against Venom. Venom is a PvP madman in my server. I had to do it in Galactic Arena because I had to find a tank team to fight. So, I want you to watch this first one, uh, which is right up here. So, this was a thing of beauty. This is this one got me really excited. So, it's uh, Zeta, Maz, and the three assassins. And they just melt this tank team like just pick it apart badly unfortunately I didn't replicate this so uh, his Zeta big beefy big beefy Zeta she actually stays up for a while um, but you see the assassins just melt her down so that made me really, really excited, the fact of how easily they melted. And I want to go back and show you one thing, how fast Panda gets destroyed. So we got to go right back to the beginning. So there we go. Watch Panda's going down, 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 down. Bailey's coming in. Whack, whack, whack. He does get his ultimate off, unfortunately, but then he dies. Okay. But now let's fast forward and we're going to try that again. So exactly the same teams. Uh, but this time, for some reason, and I don't know why, Panda does not get targeted. He still gets stunned, but look at he's not taking any damage. And, um, yeah, things are going poorly, Will Robinson. And then, as soon as he ults, it's over. I'm dead. So, there goes... Rickert, nope, no, they're all still up. Rickert, Zeta, and Bailey all died in one big ground and pound. And the team just falls apart. So next I thought, okay, let's try one more. Let's try energy. You saw that already. Yeah, I lost. So the reason why I thought this might work is they could come back here and bang, bang, bang. Pick off the team, get them done. But the problem is, and as you can see, he doesn't have his Miranda X-30 yet. Because just Luke has the cheat life and the uh, the attack buff. But that's enough because I want you to pay attention. When Luke dies, he's going to pop back up and he's going to kill my entire team. So they go to the back and they do do their job. Rickert burns Luke down, but he pops up and now everybody's dead. Zeta's dead. Maz is dead. Rickert's dead. And then uh, Nord's going to ult and they're all dead. So I don't think energy is the way to go. But uh, there is promise on the tank team. Um, maybe if he's X-30. Don't quote me on that. I don't know. Uh, but I do think that you could possibly do something with them in, in PvP. Now, uh, the last thing I want to show you is... Where is it? Uh, 
obviously the place where we all kind of think he's going to be used the most often, and it's going to be the place where I use him the most often, and that is... Whoa, 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 don't start yet, don't start yet, is Terradome X3. So, this is not the, this is the first team that I got to work on auto. I'm going to make a, a complete guide video to Terradome X3, but for now, uh, let's just say that this is not the team, uh, the, not the ideal auto team. I found a much, much better team, and that was with, uh, put Moss to the middle, put Muka in the front, Change this to Praying Eyes, this prototype, and then use Ruler's Ring because that's going to help heal Ma Muka. Um, uh, if you don't have Ruler's Ring, which was available in, if you passed stage 15 in Twilight, you might have a little bit of issues because Ruler's Ring also heals um, Ma's when her it transfers damage that uh, Muka, uh, sorry, Muka takes over to his his summons. But uh, you guys got to kind of get the gist of it. I tried this. Uh, instead of Ruler's Ring here, it gives them a little bit more survivability off the beginning, but I don't think it really did much. Uh, but this is Terradome X3. Um, he does kind of shine in here, or these three assassins, I should say, together shine. Um, oddly enough, you don't need Dominic to do Terradome X3. You don't. You can do it with uh, Muka, Rickert, Bailey, Moz, and Randall. And I'll, I'll highlight that footage as well in uh, my uh, Terradome X3, X123 footage, which I'm going to make that video directly after this one, so it will also be released tonight. But, um, yeah, no, the three assassins, they, they shine. Um, I beat this on full auto right away, and I will say this is a very hard dungeon. Um, but, uh, he's gonna be good here. He's also gonna be good in, in anywhere else in Terradome, just saying. Um, I'm trying to think, uh, where else could he be good? Uh, what other content could he be good at? Um, that's probably where everyone's gonna run him. Uh, story? Probably not. No. Uh, you could use him in PvP, as we discussed. Um, I don't know if he's gonna really be any good in Soul Mine. He does have his uh, place in this battle right here in the Katosian Triangle, very, very much so. He's got a really good, solid spot there. And then Lost Valley, obviously, here. And I think that's about it. Like I said, he's not a must-pull character. You can uh, definitely get away with just picking up one copy and slow farming him. So, yeah, um, Dominic, really cool-looking character. Uh, nice, simple kit. He does dish out the damage, though. Like... Um, I don't know if we... Uh, we'll just do this. I'm going to go back to that monitor really quick since I still got it up. If we look at the damage meter, this is an X20 um, Dominic. And this is an X30 Rickert. And also keep in mind, the proc damage that Bailey and Dominic do from their soul swords... Soul swords? Wait, sword souls. I always screw that up. That damage shows up on Rickert damage meter so even at x20 i think he is doing more just base damage than rickert although you got to keep in mind the way rickert's kit is you kind of have to say that rickert's still blowing him out of the water but this is x20 versus x30 at x30 um i'm going to be really really inter interested to see how much he blows uh, rickert out of the water but rickert is still the engine that makes this team go okay Okay, uh, 24 minutes. We're going to wrap it up right there. Uh, this is the Dominic Deep Dive TLDR. He's a, he's a good character. He's not an essential character. You don't even need him for Terradome X3. Uh, you probably don't need him for PvP unless that's the team you want to focus on. All right, but the assassins are not... They're, they can You can work in PvP, but they're not great. Uh, obviously, though, keep in mind that if you are a newer type player and you're building your assassin team next, you're, you're probably going to have some juicy hunter teams in PvP to go against and kill. So you will get some use out of them. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to wrap it up right now. Um, if you've made it to the end of this video, the safe word of the day is high heels because uh, that's what they put them in. I like to refer to them more as um, dash booster heels. 
<laughs> but they did put him in high heels. So high heels, put that down in the comments below. I will thank you profusely. I will know you made it to the end of this video. And I will catch you in the next one, ladies and gentlemen. Take care. Peace. Bye-bye. Oh,